stretchers are almost incidental. They're, um, you know, we're talking about three or four inches here, and uh, very deep tendons. I tried to go for strength, but it doesn't really do that much. Really, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a shelf below. And believe it or not, I mean, it's not stupid, but a shelf is really important in, in a bench. And um, that's because that's where your planes went when they weren't on top of it. And so you would move the, your bench planes in the middle, you know, beginning of the day, you put them on the shelf below, and then, and then, and then you work. So you need a shelf. So to have a shelf, you need structures. Hence, structures. Early benches didn't have structures. Early benches were built like Windsor chairs. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, Roman benches from Pompeii up through, uh, you know, uh, European benches up to the 15th century, we don't see stretchers appear on benches until about the 17th century. So that was a new innovation. Um, so this is still essentially a Windsor chair. You know, this is the seat, and these are the legs. That's where the strength is. This is just the decorative stuff at the bottom where you scrape your mud off, uh, off your feet. Um, so that is why I can get over one of the principal objections that I know. How many engineers do we have here today? Okay. Not too many. Okay. It's a little light on engineers. Um, is it, you know, most engineers would look at this bench and see that it's going to rip itself apart. Because I have this top, you know, expanding and contracting. So, that, so it's expanding at the width up here. And then down here I have these stretchers that are working in opposition to this. They're restraining them. And so you would think that this bench would tear itself apart. And if you look down here closely, I think you can see there's some little gaps from here because the legs just pivot in and out on the stretchers. It's, it, it presents no problem. Uh, I have a bench, I have several benches that have survived many, many years uh, without any problems. Yeah, but the gaps open a little bit at the bottom, but they take the seasons. But other than that, it's no problem because all the strength is up here. So if this tears itself apart, even if it did, it wouldn't matter. It hasn't torn itself apart, but you know, those little gaps, the little unsightly gaps. So it's really changing the, you know, the, your, your focus or your locus of, of where your strength is. You know, your, your power animal's up here, not here. Not um, on the, uh, this is not a traditional touch, the little toolbox. Um, you know, they would uh, just take the, uh, they wouldn't put a lid on it. I put a lid on it because this is for my daughter, and, you know, I, I wanted to make it a little fancier for her. And so, uh, I put the lid on it, and she likes the lid, so mission accomplished. Um, other details, let's talk about, uh, before we get into the work holding, uh, this is also a very traditional French touch. Um, it's uh, you know the, it's called the rack, very very clever French name, um, and these are on just about every French bench you'll see, and very handy. Um, I, it doesn't get in the way of typical work holding chores like you think it would. But this is where your chisels, uh, your chisels go, your bench chisels, basic layout tools, your squares, um, and maybe your rasps, your all the things that you're reaching for all the time uh, would, would go in the. In, in the, in the very common French detail. Um, on the work holding, um, the work holding isn't um, entirely traditional French. Uh, it's very close, um, but I was trying to simplify some things. The leg vice is, is a just as perfectly according to Rubo. Um, it has uh, a parallel guide down at the bottom uh, with, a, with a pin for controlling uh, what sort of thicknesses you, you uh, can clamp with it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of leg vices because number one, they're simple. Uh, you can build one in an afternoon instead of having to, you know, construct a very, very complex shoulder vice. For example, uh, this was took less than a day to make. Uh, if you have wooden screws, this actually, as you can see, it's three TPI, so it moves very, very fast in and out. Um, and then, most importantly, there are no guide bars. You know blocking access to any of the clamping area up here. You know, usually with a quick release and, and some traditional English face vices, you have those parallel bars above your screw. What's up with that? I mean, there's no reason for that other than to make your life miserable. So this just allows so much clamping force and space for work that uh, I really can't imagine, you know, living without uh, the tail vise. And the tail vise was actually, I mean, I'm sorry, the leg vise. And the leg vise actually was a, an innovation suggested by Roubaix in the 18th century that was rejected by the other musiers, the other craftsmen, because it made life too easy. 
they didn't, no, they didn't like that. They, they, they preferred the hard way um, because that was, they didn't want people forcing them to work faster than they had nicer vices. Um, but the Rubo won eventually, and, and so the leg vice became ubiquitous in the, uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, the Rubo does show a tail vice on one of his benches, um, which is a very traditional tail vice. Uh, you know, big sliding block that you would see on a Scandinavian or a German bench. Um, I'm, I'm more, I, I don't, I just like those uh, vices because they sag, a lot of them do. And they have to be very carefully installed and maintained and they create a, an area of your bench which is a no pound zone, so you can't, you can't hit it. Uh, not, not out of anger, but out of accident. Um, and so what I do, I, I much prefer using a quick release with a big chop here so that I can just reach in move my dog up and it, it is in line with any of the any of the dogs here along, along the front. And the reason the chop is so big is so that it will support like a big case size uh, here so I can actually plane out here and it won't sag. So that's why I have this big uh, nice wooden chop. Uh, this is a Shelton vice which is an early 20th century uh, gizmo, one of the first quick release vices. Instead of a screw attachment it has two, um, two sets of teeth that interact with each other. So when you turn the lever, the teeth move just a little bit. Just enough to hold your order for woodworking, not enough to hurt you. So uh, that was the other thing with my daughter. You know, she got in a fight with one of her friends, her friend's head in the vice. You know, probably not gonna sue me because it's a shelf. I mean, you're not gonna, you know, it's not gonna really go more than like an eighth of an inch. So how much damage could it do? I don't know. So that's the basis for all the, all the work holding.